You're listening to a Reliance podcast, conversations and insights about our efforts to end sexual violence in one generation. Hi, I'm David Prescott. I'm coming to you from my uh, home office. I've been asked to speak on the topic of talking to kids about sexual abuse. And um, this is an area of work that I've done now for just short of 34 years. Although after a certain point, um, I, uh, I tend to stop counting. Um, when I'm uh, talking to other professionals, I like to make the joke that talking to kids about sexual abuse is actually what made my hair so gray. Um, uh, and so, uh, on a, I guess on a more serious note, let me let me say a few basic things um, that uh, that I've learned both through practice and um, through reading just about every research study um, ever uh, ever completed. And I'll just take a moment and say, why do I read research so much? Um, the answer is because um, when I first came online doing this work in 1984, everything I thought I knew um, has turned out to be wrong, uh, as you're about to hear. So let me just say a few things about the basics. Number one, if, if you're not already aware, kids who've sexually abused, um, there's a lot of abuse in our communities. It's an unacceptable amount of abuse. Abuse exists not only in our families, but in our communities and in our neighborhoods. And anybody that reads the news knows that it happens in our schools, on our sports teams, and um, um, and every place else. Um, it's really serious, and unfortunately, time doesn't um, allow for me to get into that at any level. So what we know is there's a lot of abuse out there. That's the bad news. The good news is the kids who do abuse actually go on to continue to abuse much less than we ever thought. And in fact, the rates of reoffense, if you will, have gotten lower and lower and lower with each passing year. Research is, is proving this with big, big, big numbers of kids. And, um, uh, you know, researchers around the world are are finding this. So the, um, the good news is this is happening. And one of the reasons I think that sexual abuse, uh, at least reoffense, has gone down um, over time, particularly with kids, is that because people like us, uh, parents, and professionals are talking about it a lot more. So I guess, you know, one of the ways that we can prevent abuse is by talking about it with our friends, with our neighbors, with our colleagues, etc. Um, talking about it is the enemy of silence that allows sexual abuse to continue. Okay. So having said that, the rates are actually going down. This means we all have opportunities for hope and encouragement and optimism. There is simply no question about this. Okay. The next thing to know is that simply trying to punish sexual abuse away doesn't work. So adopting um, uh, societies around the world have tried to adopt a tough-on-crime approach towards the problem of sexual abuse, and it hasn't worked. Um, what does seem to work are things like treatment and working with the right treatment provider and specialized treatment services. The other thing that works uh, for kids that are um, involved with the legal system is a uh, supportive uh, probation officer who also is willing to, uh, to hold kids accountable. So the right mixture of the right relationship, the right goals of treatment and supervision, and the right, the qualities of the right professional, the professional who is warm and empathic and rewarding, but still uh, sticks to the rules. These are the things that seem to help kids grow into being strong and abuse-free adults. So I just wanted to put that out there uh, from the outset. So with that, then, there's a couple of things that I keep coming back to when we do have these conversations with, uh, with kids. And the first thing that I'm going to say um, about, uh, um, about parents is the role that you have. Parents have the most important role in kids' lives. There's no question about this. Long after professionals like me are out of your lives and have written discharge summaries on the kids that we work with, you are still the parents. Um, like it or not, you're the kid's parent throughout the rest of their life, um, even, after you, even after you pass on. 
Um, there's a there's a story, a joke that's told about uh, about fathers. That there's three phases of fatherhood. The first is that my father is the greatest guy on the planet. The the second is that as you get a little bit older, your father's an idiot. <laughs> and then the third is um, the third stage of fatherhood is you know my father used to say. And this is a sort of semi-humorous way of saying that the words you say to your kids are going to live on forever um, in the minds of your kids, again, long after the professionals in their lives have, uh, have moved on. So um, uh, this is one reason why I say one of the most important things to remember is you're the parent. And this means you're the grown-up and they're the kid. And it's important to always remember this, this kind of mindset of you're the parent and they're the kid. And the reason that I say this is because where I've seen a lot of parents go wrong is by saying things like, I always thought of my, uh, my kid as more like a friend, more like a partner or a colleague. And um, I would say when you're having these kinds of conversations, that's exactly uh, the attitude that you don't want to take. Remember that abuse is scary for your kid as well as for you. And so somebody needs to be the grown-up in the room when you're having the conversation. I recommend that it be you. Um, I'm sorry if this comes off uh, the wrong way to some parents. Um, and it may be that you can be an effective parent by being more uh, close.